Hi there, I'm Clint Finney, uh, civil engineering technician for the uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service covering Jefferson, Harrison, Guernsey, and Noble County. And today we're here to talk about ways we can both harvest some more water and conserve water in this dry time that we're all experiencing. Um, I'm currently standing at the base of a spring development. Um, this was done in the late 90s. And at some point we'll show you parts of the video here that will show you that it's sort of failing. It's still gathering about two or three gallons a minute, but we're losing about two to three gallons a minute. There's two or three little seeps that are coming out here along the hillside and, and they're running over and not getting into the collection. So what we need to do at this point to help harvest some more water, if we're in a situation where we don't have enough water, we're not harvesting enough water, we need to come back up in here and open this up so that the water, the free flowing water, is getting back to the collection that's down there. Uh, as I said, there's about 100 feet of collection along this cliff face. Uh, I know that the cliff face was eight foot tall when we started. We put uh, perforated pipe at the bottom, filled it with gravel, and then pushed dirt up against the cliff. It has since settled, and so that's why the water's coming out of here. So what we're gonna do is, is dig along these wet spots until we hit the old gravel. There's 57 gravel in there, it should be eight foot thick. Once we clean that out and get down to that gravel, this water will then go back to free flowing down to our perforated pipe and get into our collection system. So like I said, we're, we're getting about half as much water as we normally would get when we fix this, when we dig back down and get to that 57s, We'll be getting that water back in there. We'll be getting all the flow from the stream. And, and in permanent fix, we need to come back in here and put more 57s in here all the way up to above where the water line is and fill in with more dirt over top. But we're today really just talking about emergency situations and how to get more water into our spring development. All right, so what I've done here is just opened up a hole to get that water to free flow back into the old gravel bed, and it appears to be doing that at this point. And there's a ton of water. Of course, I just opened this up, so that's why there's a bunch of water, but we'll be getting a whole lot of that free flowing water back in our spring development. As I'm digging around here, I'm just trying to find the old 57 uh, gravel bed that's down in here. And I, I think it's in this line right here. But I started up higher than, than I, I anticipated being. I just want to keep working my way down the hill until I hit that gravel bed. And I'll continue to dig down until I dig up those old 57s. Once I hit that old 57 river gravel bed that was put in here, that's when I know I'll have hit the old collection and the water will go straight down through the old 57s. So it's going to take some time to learn exactly where that is. We don't have GPS points to know exactly where that collection was. We just know it's somewhere in the vicinity of here. We're just gonna have to keep digging down until we hit that 57 gravel bed. Hi, I'm Wendy Dodds. I work with the Jefferson Soil and Water Conservation District and we're just can continue these short videos of quick and easy ways that you can try to collect some of the water that maybe exists on your farm during drought but isn't being captured. So in Jefferson County, at least I would say it's pretty safe to say that most of our pasture operations, even in drought times, may have a situation like this out on the back 40 where it's very hard to get to. Um, some people may be just turning their cows out to find that little muddy source like this and drink at that. Uh, but there's multiple reasons why we would prefer that that wasn't the case. Uh, there are better ways to do it for the health of the animal, for the health of the environment. So the, one of the reasons is definitely if you just let the whole herd come back here to drink out of this seep or spring as it exists, basically they're not going to be getting the water quantity that they need. Um, and then all of them moving in here together is going to destroy the integrity of the soil and mess that situation up even more. They're going to be wallowing in it, stepping in it. Um, it's the surface water that they're defecating in essentially. So it's just not good for the health of the animal. It's not good for the volume of water they need. And again, it's just not good for the erosion aspect of this, especially if you determine that you wanted to do something with this area later. Uh, so basically, uh, we're going to talk about some different ways that we can very quickly uh, 
collect this water in a way that makes it easier for the cows or sheep to drink from. All right, so in a drought situation like we're in right now, we have to realize that if we've got free flowing water somewhere, that is a very good spring. It's a very good seep or spring, however, whatever you want to call it. And we really need to be thinking about developing it in a permanent way at some point. We all know that in a drought is probably not the time that we, we have the time, money, or excavators available to be able to develop a spring. But if, if we've got free flowing water, that needs to be marked down and we need to be talking about developing that water going forward. So what we would do to develop a spring permanently, we would dig um, above where the water comes out, down to the water level, put gravel in, put perforated pipe in, into a solid pipe and down to a, a tank that we could pump out of or a stock tank or both. Um, but today we're going to talk about what, what I've been calling a peasant level um, spring development. Something that we can do quickly uh, to be able to get us some water, to capture some water, uh, to either put it into a stock tank, a, a temporary stock tank, or a uh, temporary tank of some kind above ground to be able to pump out of to a, a tank that we may have in the truck bed or on a wagon bed uh, to be able to haul to our livestock. So in, in this peasant level sort of system, uh, we would take this free flowing stream here and, and put a, a shallow layer of dirt across that stream and then place a pipe in that shallow level of dirt uh, and, and then put some more dirt across it. All we need to do is build enough of a dike here to force the water into the pipe so that we can then take that pipe further down and, like I said, run into a stock tank or another tank. So we're going to show that in here in successive videos, but we'll, I, I just have kind of cleaned this so that it's straight so that I can lay the pipe in there. I'll, I'll sprinkle some dirt on it and then put the pipe in the, in the dirt, pack it down with my feet, and then continue to put layers of dirt on top of it, hopefully in, at the same time getting it wet because we need that, that dirt to be just a little bit wet to be able to tamp and stay in there. And at that point, then we'll have a dike and a small water catchment that will push the water through the pipe. We need to build that dike up just a little bit above the pipe and then also pro probably, or we should, give it a route around. In case we get one of those big thunderstorms that we're all hoping we get, that water will come screaming down through here and take out our temporary dike. We need to give it a, a way to go around it so hopefully it won't destroy that. But know that if we get a storm, you may have to come down here and do some maintenance. That's why this is a temporary thing. The other thing is, as we go forward, I don't want to forget to mention, if you have livestock loose in this area, this is somewhere we need to be thinking about temporary fence, a solar charger, something to keep them out of it. Even if we covered it over with, with galvanized roofing or something, just to keep them out of it, because if they come and stamp through that dike, they're going to just ruin it. It's something we're going to continue to fix uh, day after day after day. If we want this to collect water, we've got to make sure that nothing's getting in here and ruin it. And also we need to be mindful of leaves because we're starting to get a bunch of leaf drop. The leaves will plug up that pipe. The best way would be to put a cap on the end and small holes in it so the water got in it rather than taking leaves and dirt and debris into our pipeline. All right, so what we've done here, you can see we got water flowing already, and uh, I, it's funny, it, we did this all in about four or five minutes. So we put a small little dike here. Now this is, this is minimum. I would extend that a whole lot further. I would bring it up at least three, four, five inches above that pipe if possible. But you can see we're already collecting water, and in, in my experience and, and what I've done here over the last 20 years in developing springs, that's a good gallon a minute that we're collecting there. Uh, a gallon a minute, of course, 1,440 gallons a day in a 24-hour period. Uh, we're talking about a beef cow typically in Jefferson County that's going to drink 20 to 30 gallons of water a day. So y'all can do the math, 1,440 gallons, that's going to water quite a few beef cows. 
and this is something we did pretty quick uh, to be able to collect the water. Now, with that being said, we now need to put this into a tank, either a tank that the cows can drink out of or a, a, a tank that we can pump out of, and we need to have enough reservoir down there to collect that water. And I'm not saying it has to be 1,440 gallons, but you need to know how many times a day you ought to be pumping the water out if you don't want to lose any. Um, and in, in the future, like I said, we would want to develop this and develop it permanently. This is just a quick way to get a bunch of water for the cows and realize they're not going to drink the full 20 or 30 gallon all at one time. They're going to drink it over a, a eight hour period or a 12 hour period. So we've got the opportunity to collect a bunch of water here that we didn't have and if we're one of those situations where we're hauling water from a distance away, at least now we're collecting water right here at the farm and we don't have to leave the farm to go get more water. All right, so uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about this is a tire trough. And of course, here again, this is <laughs> if we were going to permanently do a spring development, this is something we would put on it for stock water. It also acts for, for this situation as an emergency place to pump water out of. This is collecting the excess water that's already passed through a storage tank that has a pump in it. Now we also have another reservoir if we need to pump water out of, we can pump it out of here. But basically the water comes from the storage tank up above, comes into this stock tank. The overflow is in the middle of the, the tire where the bead or the rim used to be. It comes in and then the overflow pipe carries the water back out again. Um, from the video, you probably see that the water level is lower than the top of the four inch pipe. That's because this spring uh, in very wet times flows way too much water and it will overtop the tire. So they've got the overflow cut down in a moon shape on this side so that it will take in all the water when we get those heavy, heavy spring rains. Um, but basically we're going to go down the hill and show the outflow of this tank and how to collect that outflow. And the reason we may want to do this, we may have maybe pumping or we may not have a pumping platform in the spring, but we have a stock tank and at night when the livestock aren't drinking, the water's flowing out of the trough. Um, several, many, many, many farmers have spring developments, have troughs. Yes, the cattle are drinking most of the water during the day, but at night when they're not drinking, they're getting some outflow. And if they need some extra water, we need to have an additional storage maybe to store the water. Then again, put a pump in it, pump out of that additional storage and bring it back up either to this stock tank or to a truck or a trailer to be able to haul water to our other livestock in another place. So this, this spring has a four inch outlet and, and typically that's what I've designed over the last 20 years is what we were designing prior to that. Some springs would have a, a smaller uh, diameter pipe coming out of the stock tank, whether it be a concrete or a tire trough. But you can see we've got a really good flow coming out of that. So we're losing two gallons a minute here at night when, when the livestock aren't drinking. If we've got other stock somewhere that need other water, we're letting that go on down the creek. Um, so what we would do here in this situation, if we wanted to collect this water, we would get what they call a fern co-fitting and put over the edge of this pipe and neck that down to an inch and a quarter or an inch pipe. And we've got the fittings. We'll show you all that here in another video. But we would neck it all down to a, a, a polyethylene type pipe and run it down over this bank to a storage tank down there. And that, that can be the simple um, tote tanks that we've got. You can buy a truck tank to sit down there or any kind of storage, a Rubbermaid trough even, that would fit down there. We just wouldn't want to water the livestock out of that but at least it would be some additional water that we could use uh, for other sources or, or in other times. And maybe this spring doesn't keep up with your livestock during the day, but if we collected all the night water and put it back, we would have enough water to keep the livestock. All right, so uh, just materials kind of discussion. Um, this is a fern co fitting that I was talking about down there uh, on the four inch pipe. This is actually a two inch fern co, but it's a two inch fern co to a two inch bushing that then is fitted with an inch and a quarter uh, barbed to thread fitting. And then we put uh, polyethylene inch and a quarter on the outside. So that's the fitting I was talking about that we could put down at the outlet of the spring. 
to be able to collect water and of course then you would have PE pipe that would go forever and ever wherever you need it to go. Um, one inch, this, this happens to be inch and a quarter, three quarter inch would probably even work in this emergency situation. I will say that uh, as far as standard goes, if we're going to front flow gravity water permanently, we need to be looking at an inch and a quarter. Unfortunately though, inch and a quarter is not as easy to come by. You can go to your average lows and get one inch or three quarter and so in this emergency temporary sort of situation, I would think we could get away with using one inch or three quarter. Just know you may have some air locking issues. Shouldn't really be a problem as long as we have enough fall to bring it down. So I've got this all put together, but I'll show you the, the bushings, I guess. So this is the, the bushing that goes into the Fernco fitting and then the standard barb, thread to barb fitting that screws in there. And then we just screw the, or just push this with hose clamps into an inch and a quarter like so. Uh, and that gets us from whatever size our overflow is at the spring down to a manageable size in the inch and a quarter or inch or three quarter. Uh, we would use sort of the same fittings, although it would just be a barb to barb fitting on our collection, our peasant collection there in the stream. I just put a small piece of pipe in there so you guys could see the overflow and how we caught it so fast. Uh, but you could just use the full, full standard coil of pipe and go to your source. You wouldn't have to have a connection. I typically do put a connection in there somewhere just so I can pull it out for clean out purposes if I need to, but we would just have a barb to barb fitting on that um, situation. If you're going to do this, I mean, by all means, call one of us and we'll talk you through some things. But, <clears throat> so as we talk about these pipe and pipe fittings, um, I, I realize to some of you that's foreign, but what I'm going to say is uh, don't be afraid to take a piece of the pipe that you have or, or what you have available and go to your local hardware store and put it together in the aisle way so that you know when you walk out of there you're going to walk out with all the parts that you need when you get back. I do this all the time. I'll go to my local hardware and stand around in the aisle way and just put pieces together. There's a million different ways to put these pipes together to make them work. There's cheap, there's expensive. You can stand around and figure out what system works for you or which one's the best. While we're here, we'll also look at the two different tank styles we have. Um, this is ICB, ICBM, I don't know, I hear them called many, many, many different names. This one had chemicals in it at one point. Uh, it's been washed out and been used for water for 10 or 15 years. Um, but this one holds 250 gallons. It's pretty standard. Most of you see them. Unfortunately, you know, you could buy these a month ago for $75. Now you're going to pay $150 for them because everybody wants them. And then there's standard truck tanks and standard... Uh, big round dome tanks that you can buy uh, from local supply places, uh, but this is just a standard tank storage. Um, if it's low enough in elevation, we could run it into the into the this pipe down in the bottom, and the water will bubble up. Or we could run the pipe into the top into this hole. Either one, as long as there's enough elevation fall, it's going to work either way. Um, and then this is just your standard Rubbermaid um, tank. It holds a hundred gallon. We could run the water from our peasant level spring development or, or from our spring development that we're recapturing into one of these tanks if the livestock can get to it and drink. I said while I was down there we wouldn't want the cattle to go down into that stream and down over the bank but if we're in a place with our peasant level development or with a spring development we're just running it down the hill it's still a safe place for the livestock to get to we could run that into this stock tank and allow them to drink from it. Word of caution though there's no real good way to put an overflow in these. So the water is going to overflow. So the way to do that is make it so that the tank overflows over the back and the livestock can only access it from the front so that you don't get the mud and, and manure right here at the edge of the tank. The way I, the way I have done this in the past is run the water in, make sure the water flows over the back and just run a temporary fence across the top with a solar box on it to keep them from accessing the mud on the back side because cattle will, if they can, do it. So just two different kinds of tanks. I mean, we, we can do tanks in many, many, many different ways. Rubbermaid sells a 300 gallon. Uh, if you've got sheep and you don't need much storage, even a 50 gallon may help. It may get you out of a jam if you need to, but just quick ways to be able to store water. And I guess while we're here, we'll talk a little bit about pumping. Um, and I need to do some more research on this, but they sell a millions of different kinds of pumps depending on your, your source. Uh, gasoline pumps that will pump 100 feet in elevation are readily available. Uh, they, they make what they call a bilge pump that goes onto a battery. Uh, it's made to pump out the water out of the hulls of boats, but it can be hooked onto the battery of your car or your side-by-side. -side. 
and be able to pump water out of these tanks and into some other catchment or on some other storage tank that you're going to haul or move around. There's a million different ways and, and, and even down to a bucket if you have to, bucket and out of a tank and into another tank to be able to move it. But at this point, if we're really in trouble for water, we really need livestock water. Um, these are all good ways to kind of do it and be able to stay on the farm instead of having to go away and stand in line to get water somewhere to bring it back to our livestock. I, I say all the time when I'm speaking for Eastern Ohio Grazing Council and all the other grazing events that I speak at, so there's no other way to hate yourself more than to have to haul water. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And um, in this situation we find ourselves in, we have to, in some cases, haul some water. And that's just the way that it is. But we want to make that as easy as possible. We've got several neighbors that are hauling water almost eight hours a day. They're leaving the farm and standing in line for an hour and coming back to the farm. And, and the ways that we've shown you here today, uh, hopefully we could keep you on the farm and collecting water that is your own, not paying for it and not traveling up and down the road for it.